When it comes to putting together the best possible package to beat out other iOS developers going for jobs, a GitHub profile is a big piece of that puzzle. Employers do check out your GitHub page and often make quick judgments based on what they see there. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you four GitHub tips that you can use to help make your GitHub page stand out. Hey everyone, my name is Dave. I'm an iOS developer and I help new developers optimize their job search efforts with tips on all different aspects of the job hunt. Now, this is not gonna be a lesson on how to use Git or version control. You can find plenty of videos online about how to do that. But this video is gonna be all about how you can present your GitHub profile to look really legit to an employer. Let's face it, a GitHub page that looks like this isn't helping you out versus one that looks really nice and complete and has solid projects with great documentation and visuals. So similar to the LinkedIn video that I did previously, I'm gonna share with you real life examples for each tip, share the thought process behind it, and then from there you can take and implement whatever you like. And finally, this is another low hanging fruit kind of area where if you just spend 90 minutes taking your GitHub page from a three all the way up to an eight or nine, that's a great use of your time considering that employers inevitably will look into your page before any non-phone screen interview. So let's give them something really good to look at. All right, so originally I was gonna be showing you my own GitHub profile as I took you through some of these tips, but after filming the intro and outro, I came across a really solid GitHub profile from a guy named Alexander Ha, who I know from Twitter. And I reached out to him and asked if it would be okay if I showed his for this video because I think he has some really good stuff on here. I think it's better than my own and it's also just fun to highlight somebody else. And so excited to be taking you through his. And so the first, and in my opinion, the most important tip of how you can improve your GitHub profile and be more impressive with it is by having really quality readme files for each of your completed repos. And so by that, by that I mean having screenshots of the application, having a detailed description, as well as an explanation of the technologies and the frameworks that you've used. And so Alex has amazing readme files here. I wanna show you um, one of his for Diner Timer. And so this is one of his apps and right off the bat, you immediately notice the images. And so um, to me, it gives me an immediate look into what the app does, what the UI is, and immediately just provides legitimacy that this is a functioning uh, real life application that looks and performs well. So I haven't even looked at anything else beyond this. And again, I immediately am impressed. Now, if we keep going here, uh, we get a description of what the app does. It's a um, food timer specifically for breakfast foods. And so you go through a flow of what you're making and it will ask you questions and then automatically assign the correct amount of time to it. It's a really cool app. You should check it out. Um, but it also talks about how it was built, what design patterns are used, um, how the UI was constructed. And so if this wasn't included, I would have no idea um, any of that. I wouldn't know what frameworks are used or how it was constructed, but this uh, means that I don't even have to go and dig through the code to find that out myself. Alex is telling me exactly how it's constructed and it gives whoever's reading this a lot of confidence that he knows these frameworks because he's he's worked with them and, and he knows how to do programmatic UI and an MVC design pattern Again, without the need to actually take time digging through tons of files in the project, uh, this is just a really good way to communicate what you've done. And in my opinion, it's a great way to project what you know and what you've worked with. Uh, he also has a section of what he learned. I think that's really cool, just a personal touch of maybe what was new to him at the time and, and what skills that he's gained through the experience. Uh, he also has um, a how to use section with the the App Store link. So this is actually a published App Store app. I think it's really crucial that you make that known in, in the repo if it is a published App Store app and include a link so that people can easily download it, check out screenshots uh, again. And this is just something that is a way to impress employers and show that you are legit and that this is a real functioning project. 
And so this is a, a really complete and really impressive readme file. It's very thorough in its descriptions and tells me that Alex can uh, communicate concepts well. Uh, it tells me that Alex, and if you were to do something like this, it would, it would tell someone that you also have attention to detail, even down to things like uh, Markdown. So Markdown is the, the way that you format text on a readme file. It's the way that you include images and GIFs like this. And Markdown is kind of hard to learn at first, at least it was for me. And I'll include a link to GitHub's guide to Markdown um, with examples of how you can construct your, your readme files and things like that. It takes a little while to get comfortable with it, but you know, while Markdown may not be essential to an iOS developer's job, it shows me that Alex has just gone and, and figured it out and he, he knows how to use it. And um, you know, if he's done that here, he's likely to be somebody who figures out and overcomes obstacles in other areas. So that is what I consider to be a really solid readme file. And I recommend that you do this for all of your completed projects on your GitHub profile. I understand that it's pretty common that you might have repos that are only half done, in which case you wouldn't need to do this. But by having these images and by having the description, again, I think it just adds a lot of legitimacy to all the hard work that you've done. And it would just be a shame if you had a blank readme page where uh, there was nothing included and people may just assume that it's not a completed project or you know, not be aware of all the hard work that you've put into it. Tip number two is to leverage pinned repos. So you'll notice here that there is a pinned section in the middle of Alex's main GitHub profile. And so these are four repos that he has selected to be displayed under his pinned section. And so the thinking here is that by pinning your top repos that are most impressive, uh, people or employers are much more likely to actually click on and investigate those repos over other ones that may not be finished or might not be as impressive. So choose wisely in terms of which ones you want to pin. And if you don't have any, then GitHub will automatically pull in random ones that again, may not be the ones that you wanna put forward. If you have an app published on the App Store like Alex, definitely include that on your pinned repo. It's really cool when you open source App Store apps, it, it kind of just says that, hey, you know, I'm confident in this code. If you wanna take a look at it, go right ahead. And then anytime where you can make it apparent that you have an App Store app that's published, that's also a good idea to reinforce that you have that experience. Aside from App Store apps though, what you can do is select repos and projects that show that you have a broad scope and that you have a variety of different foundational skills as an iOS developer. So that could be projects that include pulling data from an API and displaying it in an app. That's a super foundational skill that employers will want you to have. From there, you could also show projects that have an MVVM design pattern over the more commonly known uh, MVC or programmatic constraints or something that works with a specific Apple framework such as core data. Um, in this case, Alex has a MapKit demo. So that kind of shows that he's worked with and is familiar with the MapKit framework. One pro tip here is that you can tailor what your pinned repos are based on where you're applying and interviewing if you know what sorts of frameworks or what types of things that that company uses and values. So a quick example of that is I was once interviewing at a company that used a 100% programmatic interface as opposed to storyboards or interface builder. And at the time I had only ever worked with interface builder. And so what I did is I actually spent about half a day learning programmatic UI and then putting together a project that had 100% programmatic UI and kind of demonstrated that I knew what I was doing when it came to programmatic UI. And so what I did is I made sure that I had this calculator clone pinned to my GitHub. That way, when the employer viewed my page, they would at least be able to see that, hey, you know, this guy has done some work with programmatic UI. And if they wanted to check it out, of course, they could click on it. Uh, I did a little bit of write up in terms of some of the benefits of that, some of the drawbacks again, some screenshots, and then if they wanted to clone it, they could see that I've actually constructed it well. And again, had some basic knowledge of programmatic UI and that I wouldn't be starting from scratch. The final thing I'll point out here is that the repo description will actually show in the pinned repo section. So right now for Alex, it just has the repo name. 
and that's because the about section is blank. But if you go to look over at mine, you'll see that the about section actually flows through. And so it's a good way where you can include a little bit more relevant information about the project without the need for anybody to actually click through and see the repo. So you'll see that, again, that's completely separate from the actual readme. It's the about section that's right here. The third tip is to have an actual profile readme file. So you can see here on Alex's main profile at the top, is this readme file. And this isn't tied to a specific repo with code. This just lives on his actual profile. So you can customize this any way that you would like. And I didn't even realize that this was possible until pretty recently when I came across a video from Carrie Presley where she goes into great detail about all the different ways that you can customize this profile uh, readme file. And it's an awesome video. I'll include the link to it below. She goes into a ton of detail about how you can set this up and shows a bunch of different examples of people who have put a lot of time and effort to have really creative or really extensive profile readmes. And this is just another small thing that you can do that's not common at all. I would say less than 5% of GitHub profiles that I've come across have even have a readme file like this. And so you can see what Alex did here, uh, just had some basic facts about himself, what he's working on, what he's learning, some contact information. And then it's really common that you'll see all sorts of emojis on this as well to add a little flavor and personality. And again, this isn't anything crazy. It probably didn't take him a ton of time to do this, but it helps me or anybody that's coming across his page just to understand a little bit more about him, which is a good thing when you are trying to land a job and when you are up against other competition that may not be doing these sorts of things. And then I'll also include a link to GitHub's uh, profile readme guide. It just explains how you can get this set up. It's a little bit different than other typical readmes. And so check this out if you want to implement that on your own page. And the fourth and final tip here is to improve your commit history. And so this section at the bottom is a commit history. Essentially, it shows green tiles the more often you make commits to your GitHub profile. So it's kind of like a visual representation of how active you are. And I will say not to stress over this too much to the point where you feel pressure, where you need to do a commit every single day just so that you never have any non-green tiles. I think some people maybe take that a little bit too far, but I will say the more activity that you have on here, the better it will probably look. So it's up to you to decide where you want to fall within that range, but it's definitely not a bad idea to get into the habit of pushing your code more often to GitHub for three reasons. The first reason is just because, again, you appear to be more active. Now, this doesn't say anything about the quality of code, but it tells me that uh, he is contributing a lot and he is constantly working on code, which is a good thing to portray. The second reason is because of the practice and experience that it will give you using Git and version control. And that's gonna become a really important skill once you actually have a job. And of course, there's a lot more complexity to version control when it comes to working with multiple people all on the same code base. But even just by using it for yourself on some of your own projects, it's gonna get you more comfortable using version control and Git, and that's gonna give you a leg up when you actually start a job. And the third reason to contribute more often is because it provides a remote backup of any code that you commit. So if your computer is stolen or if it breaks, um, as long as you have access to your GitHub account, then you can pull down or clone any project and you can never lose any code that you've committed to a remote repository. There you go, guys. I hope that you took something good from this video. If so, let me know in the comments how you plan to improve your own GitHub page. When I was a new developer trying to land my first role without past experience, my approach was to have every single aspect of my application as solid as possible. And my GitHub page, I think, was an important element of that. I have a link to mine below if you want to check that out more. And if you've made it this far and enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit like. It really helps me know if these videos are providing value to you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.